like 6.30 in the morning. It's the time we get started around here, but I'm about to take Kobe for a walk and get some coffee, but I'm gonna show you the game that we always play whenever I pull out the leash, okay? You wanna play this game, buddy? You wanna play this game? I'm gonna get you. I got you. We're gonna have a little morning chat. Sometimes in the morning I like to have a little bit of morning thoughts, you know? I don't know about you guys, but I'm sure there's a lot of people that could relate to this. I'm sure a lot of people watching this put a lot of pressure on themselves. For me, I put a lot of pressure on myself in terms of just, you know, wanting to be successful, wanting to feel like I live a full life, a happy life. So I guess you could say I, I, I place a lot of stress upon myself, you know, to always make sure and feel like I'm doing the right thing to move in the right direction. Specifically, you know, business-wise, like I, I've worked for my family for almost like 10 years and then one day told my dad, hey, you know, I don't know, this is it. And so I felt like for him, he was disappointed in that. At, in that moment, but at the same time he wanted to give me my opportunity to like spread my wings and do my own thing and I kind of had my back against the wall at that point. I was like fuck I you know I really got to make this YouTube thing work and ended up going hard with YouTube eventually moved out here started the clothing line and now You know if you would have asked me years ago if I could be where I'm at now I would have been so freaking happy, you know, but that only lasts so long or that's only relative to you know the time and once you kind of get there, you're like, all right, you set new goals for yourself. So, but you know, I try to always remind myself in 20 years from now, you will have killed to be back in this position, you know, be at this age, be this healthy. I have to remind myself that sometimes, you know, and I'm sure a lot of people watching this who place a lot of stress upon themselves or who worry about the future and that kind of stuff. Like you would kill to be in this moment now. Just as I'm sure, you know, 10 years ago, you'd kill to be in that moment. Like I remember 10 years ago, I just was like this young kid, not really knowing what I was doing, just having fun living life. It was so fun. But then at the time, it's just like, you don't really can enjoy the moment. So I guess really what I'm trying to say is, try to stress a little bit less. You're doing fine, all right? It's all part of the journey. Let's just keep it going, guys, okay? We're gonna get some coffee, go for a little morning walk, and then I gotta go lock in big workout session with Chris. Three, two, one, and go. Let's go, 135 pace. Good, get that 35 pace, you got 10 more seconds. Three, two, one, and time. That workout was tough. One thing I'm gonna say to you guys right now, just don't take offense to it, because there's a lot of trainers out there like this, all right? If your trainer does not stand next to you and count every rep that you do, they are not a good trainer. Doesn't mean that they don't know what they're talking about. You know, maybe they might have celebrity clients, whatever. A good trainer not only knows their shit, but they're there to motivate you. I mean, you shouldn't need a trainer to motivate you. You should feel self-motivated, that's the goal. But a good trainer is someone who's interested and cares about you. They will stand there and they will count every rep. And that is one thing I love about Chris. He times your rest time, he counts every single rep, he makes sure that you're not cheating on any of your reps, and that's how you do it. That's why I love training with Chris. I only weight train two, three times a week max twice a week i'll train with chris and i'm never doing like bodybuilding shit like you'll see i'll work in some bodybuilding movements but it's always built through a circuit hello little handsome face 
That's a hack for you guys right there. Crack your eggs always into a bowl or anything before you put it in the pan because not only will they then cook even, because if you go one by one, one's gonna cook more than the other, but it will also prevent your yolk from breaking. Stop saying to yourself cooking is too much work. The reason why it's too much work is because you guys aren't doing the prep ahead of time, okay? Of course, when you go to start any meal from scratch, it's gonna take a while. Baking sweet potatoes alone takes like 20 minutes plus. So, bake all your sweet potatoes, wrap them in tin foil, peel them as such, and then just take them out the oven, throw them in the fridge. So then when you're ready to eat, you just cook your meat, cook your fish, whatever it is, pop one of the sweet potatoes in the microwave, boom, done, ready to go. Four eggs, about three, four pieces of bacon, some watermelon, and that's pretty much what a post-workout meal is looking like for me. Mind you, I had a shake this morning because I always like to get a little bit of food in my system before weight training. Otherwise, if I'm doing a run or anything not involving weight training or anything like that, always fasted. I'd say like 80% of the time follow an animal-based diet, which means predominantly just fruit, red meat, and like dairy products, like sheeps, goats, and cow's milk cheese. But during the winter time, I'll kind of taper off and have a little bit more of a flexible diet. Now carbs wise, I'd say I eat potatoes or rice three times a week sometimes maybe four depending on the workload but i really try to limit my carbs you get a ton of carbs in fruit alone all right yo i'm not even trying to front yo yesterday heading into the ninth hole i was only four over i was four over par heading into the ninth hole shot a fucking quad then the next hole i shot another quad completely mentally fell apart to the point where i was like all right this fucking round is a wash, you know? And it's, sometimes it just be like that. I'm sure so many of you guys have seen this. The shot that Tiger Woods hit, I think it was at the Masters or the US Open or something where um, the ball stops right at the Nike logo and then like trickles in. It's like one of the most iconic shots, if not the most iconic golf shot of all time. And the crazy thing about it was that prior to him hitting that shot, he hit a really, really shitty shot. And the guy was talking about, you know, some of the greatest moments in life happen, you know, right after something tragic or when things are really shitty. Like, had Tiger have not hit that really shitty shot to put him in that position, he would have never had that iconic shot. That will be remembered forever. Anyways, Brickhouse Boxing, yeah, no hot going on. We're pulling up. Can't have a successful life without discipline and routine. All right, you guys will see a lot of times I eat the same breakfast, same first meal of the day. If it ain't eggs, then you know, maybe it's a little bit of steak and some fruit. A big part of actually eating healthy or having like a healthy body is being consistent with your food choices, meaning that it's good to obviously change things up, but you don't want to be changing things up so much to the point where your body can't build familiarity with the foods that it ingests slash digests. If you wanna shit like properly and regularly, then you gotta be consistent with the food that you're putting in your body. That way your body can be familiar with the food, it can break it down, it's not being like, what the fuck am I trying to break down? It's not spending more energy trying to break it down. Papayas, read a little, little info for you guys here and why they're so great rather than me just trying to like pretend like I really know, but like I do know, but like, and obviously it works, but like let me just like read it properly to you guys, you know? Also known as papas or pawpaws, never heard it. I mean, I'm sure people watching this have heard it. Yeah, anyways. Contain a range of nutrients, including antioxidants and potassium. Eating papaya may help reduce the risk of heart disease, diabetes, cancer, and more. So yeah, long story short, guys, packed with nutrients, proper for the skin, tastes fire, especially when you add a little bit of lime. These papayas, which are the ones from Mexico, they're like a much deeper orange color. And for those who might say like, oh, I don't really like papaya, I don't like the taste, it's kind of strong, it has like a weird kind of like stinky feet almost kind of smell. I hear you on that, even though I do like that kind, but that's why there's also the Hawaiian papayas, which are much different. They're not as strong in terms of like taste. They don't have that kind of strong stinky smell and they're yellow. They're kind of more like a yellowy orange color. I actually prefer these, especially if you go ahead and keep them in the fridge and serve them cold. Oh my God, bro, so far. And that is how we keep the body looking young and healthy. Peep the fucking shade skis, bro. All right, I got the chromies. Okay, I picked these up in Miami with the, with the stone colored Distress Basic hoodie. I just wanna put my people on a little bit of game real quick. Like, you can't always wear stuff 
that has big logos on it. You gotta mix it up. So that's why basics are essential, especially when it comes to like hoodies and stuff, like every day. A solid basic, you can mix and match with so much more shit, you know? The all natural sage, and we got the latte. First things first, I'm gonna go cop my favorite protein. The reason why it's my favorite is honestly straight up is because I love the way it tastes. And we're gonna go run a little bit of errands right now. All right, with the chromies on. I'm trying to eat a group chat and tell them it's a... Shout out Body Energy Club. If you guys see this, send me your protein and I'll put you guys on even more because I love your guys' protein. Shout out to them because they are a Canadian-based company. I think they started in Vancouver. No, dude, that's not for you, buddy, okay? I don't want your germs on my fucking straw, boy. 25 grams of protein, one gram of fat, three grams of carbs, only two grams of sugar per scoop, and five grams of BCAAs, so. And honestly, this shit just tastes incredible. All right, now I'm gonna share with you guys the best grocery store in all of LA. This is no cap on this, all right? McCall's, baby. I'll do one of these Wagyu picanhas as well. Basically just running through what I copped. One prime ribeye, four pieces of lamb chops, Wagyu picanha, two things of raspberries. The raspberries are fucking insanely fire right now. Now I actually use fresh raspberries slash fresh fruit in all my smoothies. I don't use frozen fruit. Reason being is that it just tastes so much better. Got the farmer's market eggs. Huge difference between this and any eggs you will find at your standard grocery store. One pound of grass-fed lean ground chuck. Then we got a couple avocados, one for a few days from now, and then my favorite candy. I'll always just have one of these. This is a Swedish candy, so fire. All the flavors that they make is insane. Swedish fish, my favorite candy. One of them anyways. I'll share with you guys kind of like what my fridge is looking like right now. Fresh watermelon that I cut. Got some pineapple, strawberries some bacon. Another hack is that I just open the entire pack of bacon and then I just cook it in the air fryer and then I'll just pull out whatever I need and throw it in the microwave or heat it back up in the air fryer for like a couple of minutes. That way I save all the time and mess from cooking bacon and stuff. I cook probably like 90% of my meals at home just because I prefer the way it tastes and I prefer the way it makes me feel and a huge component of it, like I said guys previously, is that it's just doing the prep, so it makes it really easy. Got some fig labneh, goes fire with my lamb. Sweet potatoes that have already been baked. Some more fruit, mango, papaya, a little bit of grass-fed bone broth. Some coconut water that I use for my smoothies. Parsley that I use for my eggs. Parmesan cheese, I grate that on my eggs sometimes. What up guys? All right, I'm just getting ready to go train right now. And because I'm doing weight training today, I always like to have some food in my stomach. So you guys saw the protein that I just bought, so I'm gonna show you guys how I do it, all right? Two bananas in here because they're pretty small. Fresh strawberries. I have some fresh mango that I froze myself because I was out of town and I didn't want it to go bad, but typically I would use fresh mango. These raspberries are insane. I almost feel bad putting them in my smoothie because they're just so good. We have some coconut water. I like using this brand, it's pretty fire. Put that in there. One scoop of the clean whey protein and two scoops of glutamine. A couple ice cubes. Seems like a lot, but it tastes that good, so it just ends up going down that fast. Big thing that a lot of you need to stop doing while you train. It's made a huge difference for me. Don't check your phone when you're training. When you're in the gym, that's the time for you and whatever it is that you set out to accomplish that day in your workout. You're on your phone all day every day anyways, you know? At least fucking I'm next to my phone all day. If you put it aside for one hour, the type of training and all that shit that I've been doing or that I've been doing for the last, you know, however many 
months or year or whatever even in between sets like your your rest time should be time like Chris never lets me rest for more than a minute maybe if it's like an insane circuit where I'm exerting a ton of energy and it's like heavy lifting he might give me like two minutes rest max max again following the animal based diet this is what a typical meal is looking like for me I stick to this you know foundation for about, I'd say like 80% of my meals. Like tonight I'm going out to dinner at this restaurant here in LA called Mother Wolf, so I'm obviously gonna break it, but I always try to stay, you know, for the most part, true to the animal-based diet. A Little bit of Wagyu picanha here, cooked to perfection, as you can see. Avocado with a little bit of balsamic vinegar, just some salt and pepper. We got some aged cheddar cheese. We got some Hawaiian papaya. We got some mango and watermelon. All right guys, so I'm ending this video off with me heading to yoga. I get at least one class in a week. If I can do two, I'm like really happy, but I definitely do, you know, at least one. Okay, I'm gonna be real with you guys about yoga, okay? There's no part of me that ever is like, oh, like I'm, I'm, I wanna go do a yoga class today. Like I just do it because I just know how good it makes me feel, you know? I do it. Honestly, I'm sure if you just hop on Google and type in, you know, yoga near me, I'm sure you could find a hot yoga place. Like how I feel now versus how I felt, you know, prior to going to class. I'm not tired, you're just like, everything is just super chill and like relaxed and easy, you know? If you guys have any questions or anything like that regarding diet or regarding exercise stuff, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. Of course, give your boy a like. Make sure you hit that sub button if you haven't already. I'm back on the YouTube grind, so let's go baby, let's get it.